Hello, and thanks for checking out ChartGuys.com. We're proud to be one of the most successful technical analysis communities online, teaching you the skills to become a more confident, effective, and informed trader. Join our community of hundreds of analysts worldwide working together to learn the charts, generate profit, and achieve financial independence. For access to daily live chart analysis and market coverage, a thriving chat community, along with dozens of hours of exclusive educational materials. We look forward to seeing you. Let's check out some charts. Hey everyone, checking into the MJ space. The bears came out swinging today, and honestly, the last two days are pretty much the exact same thing as December 3rd and 4th. And I pointed out some similarities in yesterday's video, and there's even more after today's action. I'll point those out in just a second. For me personally today, I was fortunate enough to sell right at the top. And I certainly know that some of you watching this say, sure, you did, jerk but there's my order. And keep in mind that anything that I say in these videos, I say in front of a few hundred people while I am live. So sold the 2151, four minutes and 13 seconds into the trading day. So why did I sell after resistance had just broken? A number of reasons. Number one, nobody else was breaking resistance. Cron double topped, APHA double topped, ACB broke resistance by one penny and pulled back. Even the middle names, OGI, did not break the high of yesterday. Hexo only broke the high of yesterday by one penny. So when everybody in the sector is hitting double tops and pulling back, it doesn't matter to me that CGC broke resistance by however many pennies because the sector did not break as a whole. Remember that point. We want to see the sector going in the same direction at the same time. Why did I sell in the 2150s after a pullback? I sat through this initial consolidation. I gave the bulls a chance. I let them break resistance and then I sold the next candle. The reason is number one, we were extended having just bounced 3% from the low of the day to the high of the day, and we were extended having just moved 15% from yesterday. So at that point, it becomes, what's the risk to reward of this standpoint of 2150s? Are we gonna see 5% up or 5% down from here? And in my opinion, the risk was more favorable. That being said, that alone is not enough to make me to sell. What made me sell is watching the bid in the ask. And this is an example of getting familiar with a ticker. So CGC is my MJ horse. I have more profits trading CGC than any other Canadian MJ name, probably all of them put together. And that's just because it's the most liquid, it's the sector leader, and I've gotten very comfortable trading it over the last two years. So when I watch CGC trading, I know what's normal and what's not normal from observation. And these observations have to take place really quickly in the first 15 minutes of trading, but a big ask showed up on CGC at 21.53 or 54 right after the high of the day. We hit the high of the day and then an ask of over 40,000 shares showed up. So that's maybe $900,000 sitting on the ask. And I know from observation that a sizable order is 10,000 shares, a big order is 20,000 shares, and a 40,000 share order is the biggest order that I've seen anytime recently. So that tells me that individual is not trying to sell 40,000 shares at 2152. If they were, they would break that order up and try and exit in a timely manner. That order was put up to scare bulls into selling and it worked. I sold as soon as I saw that. I already had my sell order filled out in case we rejected from 2156, but it was that order alone that made me exit. And then of course, bears are gonna jump in in response to that. And at that point, it was a very easy short at 21 breaking. And I did not take that short, but was talking about it live and saying, you know, if we break 21 here, you can anticipate a very quick 1% due to stop losses triggering. So this is again, the one minute time frame. Look, look how fast this happened. Low of the day, high of the day, held the low, bear flag on the one minute, there's your stops triggering. And it ended up being a two and a half percent drop in one minute because everybody after the bounce from the low of the day was using that level as a stop loss. So some nice short-term signals in the first five, 10 minutes, but again, just exiting, locking in the gains from yesterday's trade and being back to all cash to patiently watch. So what is so similar about today and yesterday with the 3rd and the 4th of December? Green Marabozu, bulls buying from the open, close at the high of the day, higher open, and then profit taking first thing in the morning and a close near the low of the day. They are very similar, very similar candles. The only difference is larger range and more volume. 
But otherwise, I highlighted in the video yesterday how the hourly setup was the same thing. So the hourly setup with the little bull flag, the higher low and the bull break into the end of the day, we had that. And I forget off the top of my head, but I'm sure I could go back and watch the video from last week. I'm pretty sure I sold first thing as well back last Wednesday morning, just like I did this morning. So I did make one more attempt into CGC, tried to look for a four hour higher low. I like the four hour for clarity on CGC right now. We're still in a four hour uptrend, but we pulled back certainly significantly from the high of 2168. I was looking for a four hour higher low. I made an entry at 2005 at about 2 p.m. at the end of the day. And my intention was to add a second position in the 1950s if we kept dropping. We then dropped to a lower low. We parted around. I exited break even because I was about to live stream the afternoon daily coverage and I knew I would be distracted and the bounce took too long to take place. It took too long to get going. I knew I would not be swing trading this position because we're just looking for an hourly lower high on a bounce. And that was positioning myself for the potential of an end of the day bounce and then exiting break even when I didn't see the ideal scenario that I wanted to. So if the bulls show up tomorrow and hold 1982, we will be looking for a lower high compared to 2168. And you better believe the bears are going to be sitting and waiting for that lower high to potentially top fish against that resistance. So in the end, daily time frame, is this a break of resistance? No, I consider that a double top, obviously, with the rejection. Look at 2168, 2168, 2156, 2168. That is now a triple top as far as I'm concerned. We're still in a four-hour uptrend. We're still in a daily uptrend as long as 1821 support can hold. But the bulls have more proving to do, and this was not enough. We did not have enough momentum for the bulls to ride off of on that news, having used up a lot of that momentum yesterday. So from here, looking into tomorrow, I will be looking for the four hour higher low to form. Maybe we'll get a bottom fishing play with 1982, the low of today, support first thing. But I'm back to being picky after having nice profits on the bounce the first time, couple small gains in this choppy action, and now some solid profits on this most recent leg up. The last thing I'm gonna do is give back profits on trying to overtrade here. So I will keep my conservative mindset still open to trades, but being picky. So APHA, we rejected from the high of yesterday. First thing, I had a small swing position in APHA as well. I exited that right when I exited CGC, took a small loss on APHA and a small win on CGC more than offset that fortunately, but it's a daily inside bar. If it breaks bearish, we're looking at 463 support if it breaks bullish, then 518, which still has not broken, is the key level. So bulls still have proving to do here as well. And the must hold is the daily uptrend for all of these names, these little higher lows. If we lose, lose these little higher lows after these rejections from resistance, bears are back into complete control. ACB, we know it's weaker. It's not doing anything for the bulls that is impressive. 238 and 236 are must hold supports. And resistance is 264 and 282. I personally have no interest in ACB. It is the weakest of the major names, in my opinion. Cron, daily inside bar as well. If this inside bar breaks tomorrow and we break 677 support, that's a potential bearish entry. And we're then looking down at 655 as a clear level. There's a couple support levels before that. 675, 661. But if bears are going to take back over this sector, some inside bars breaking bearish tomorrow is a potential play. And again, on any bounces, just looking for hourly lower highs from this morning's action. VFF gave us the red flag for bulls yesterday, certainly following through in a big way today. Look at the volume. You might say, well, it's the same volume as yesterday. Yesterday had a lot of bull volume behind it. That's what that upper wick is as far as the initial push up by the bulls. Today's candlestick shows us the bears had control all day. It's almost a red marabozu, which shows us that it's mostly bear volume. We are in a daily downtrend with lower highs very clear, 795, 709, 693, and now we're looking back at 592 and 570 is the only supports. Potential playoff of 592, although we're not even oversold on the hourly. And we'll see if we drop to a lower low on the daily, keeping the bears in control. OGI failed to break resistance, and we're looking right back at 251 support 
Equilibrium on the daily will break bearish if 251 breaks. Key support tomorrow. Hexo broke resistance, but only by a penny. If we break 216, the low of today, the bulls must hold $2 to try and keep these little higher lows intact. And we need to be watching the sector as a whole. Again, I got clues this morning from other names aside from CGC. And I'm going to be watching, you know, if OGI tomorrow breaks 251 support, it doesn't mean everybody's going to break all their daily higher lows, but it certainly shows us there's that's one point in favor of the bears. If we're keeping a tally, so it's something to pay attention to sector wide. So that's the Canadian MJ space. Again, four hour equilibrium is the most likely scenario, in my opinion, for CGC, but we're not confident that four hour higher low has been set yet. I was hoping we would be with enough of a bounce at the end of the day. We didn't get it. USMJ, Cure Leaf, resistance, 821. We topped out at 810. We did not break resistance. The bulls must hold 760. We're still in a tightening daily range here as well. And we're going to be watching for a volume and volatility spike later in the week when this sideways range breaks. TRUL, this double top is now a lot more daunting in the sense that we lost the daily higher low of 1660. So not only is it a loss of the daily uptrend, but it's a double top Two red Marabozus, bears in complete control with a good amount of profit taking the last two days. Now we zoom out and look for a weekly higher low compared to 1291. And the double top certainly was the heads up of bulls losing momentum. Seaweb on the verge of a lower low, but not breaking yet. Support is 13, 1138 and 1136. It was a race between IAN and Seaweb as to who's going to drop to lower lows. And IAN wins. IAN broke 152 support. So we're down hitting 150 and we have no support. Actually, we hit 151. Where is the next support after 151? Very limited. 150, 145, 120. And that's the all-time low. So the bears have been showing us for weeks that lower lows are more likely than not. We've got it in IAN. C-Web is on the verge of it. GTII, that bull move at the end of the day. How many times have we seen USMJ with a 10 minute bull move into the end of the day and zero follow through in the following day? And the answer is probably easily over a dozen times. A new daily lower high is set at 11.93 and we're looking right back down to the low of 10.64, key daily support. CL, nice bounce follow through and this is due to the vote occurring for the merger between CL and OH, or the buyout, I should say. At this point, there are no bullish entries to be had. If you're looking for a bullish entry, you're patiently waiting for a daily higher low. We know we have to change the daily trend, which has not happened in a very long time. Has to happen for the bulls to prove anything to us. We haven't convincingly topped out yet. We would have to break the low of today tomorrow for our daily lower high to be set and then look for the higher low. And OH is the same thing. Solid bounce. Anything under 457 is a daily lower high. Have to change the daily trend by topping out, setting a higher low, and seeing continuation. So that's where we stand. Staying cautious, seeking opportunity, in and out, locking in profit as I can. Goal is not to establish long-term positions for me personally at this point. Goal is to just keep extracting profit as I can and patiently waiting for clear signals of momentum shift. We've been close. We've seen what needs to happen for these momentum shifts, but we just haven't quite been able to get it yet for the sector as a whole. And again, I need to see the sector make moves in unison if we're going to see an entire sentiment shift. The CGC news for the CEO was nice. It was a nice short-term catalyst. Names responded to that, but it's not enough for those other individual names that don't directly benefit from the CGC CEO, not enough for them to break their key resistances, at least to this point. So hope you're well. We will continue to check in. Thanks to those of you that liked my buddy's bike. He's a recent father and certainly could use all the help to get that new business off the ground. So I appreciate that. I don't have any of the end of video content here. Hard to top that bike. So I'm not going to try. <laughs>